Welcome to Reverse Engineering News. I'm your host, Hash, and I'm never going to use this card again. This week, we're looking at the reverse engineering of a smart meter used with a solar system made by a company called Goodwee. It's a man-in-the-middle attack, and you know it's real because the guy that did it actually used the Batman equation and fed that up to the cloud so that when he went and checked his uh, power readings, he saw this. Now this was all done by Scott Leggett in Australia, who got a solar system on his home, and he wanted to see the data without having a cloud connection. I mean, who wouldn't want to see the data without a cloud connection? Everything needs a friggin' cloud connection, and I think we're all universally over it. Now there's two parts of this system he could have looked at. There's the inverter and the smart meter. The inverter is powered by the solar panels, and so when the sun goes down, the thing powers off. You can't work on reverse engineering it, not easily. And since his time is at night where he would work on this thing, he figured he'd attack the power meter. Now, there wasn't anything else out there about how to look at this connection between the power meter and the cloud. There is other stuff for good Wii inverters, but not the one that he had. And after looking at it, he found out that the data, the data you want to see, the power usage data, is encrypted. And so he figured, you know, let the reverse engineering begin. Now, the first step was gaining access. And his blog is a great read because it really gives you everything that he tried, whether it worked, it didn't work, just the order that he tried it in, which is great, you know, to get an understanding of how to reverse engineer things because most of the things you try won't work. And that's just part of it. That's part of the game. If you try all the stuff and it all works first try, I mean, congratulations, uh, you know, go buy a lottery ticket. But most of the time, the stuff you try doesn't work and he shows all that. Now, as he started analyzing all the packets and the data that was going across, what he noticed is that that power data is encrypted. There's other stuff that wasn't encrypted, but he tried a few things to figure out how to, you know, get the key for it or to, to see what he could do. And one of the things he did, he called glitching the network, which is a real interesting idea. What he did is he basically removed like the internet connection from the device. So it's, it starts to pile up its packets basically. And so normally each little individual packet is encrypted, but when you remove the internet connection, it starts saving up those packets, but they're not all individually encrypted. It kind of just puts them all together. And so what he was looking for is flaws that might show up when you play around with, with this, figuring that maybe the developers weren't really trying to make the most secure system. And he has a part on his uh, blog where he talks about entering the mind of the developer. And this is great for anyone that's doing reverse engineering. I mean, if you've worked in a company that does, say, forward engineering, where you're making something, you know about all the compromises that are made, all the last-minute requests that come in. And that stuff, you know, it doesn't maybe get scrutinized as well as it should. And so, uh, you know, when the boss says add encryption, you know, if you can't read it, uh, you know, they say, well, it's, it's good to go. But, you know, that doesn't mean that it's been implemented the best way possible. Now, he tried a lot of various things, and through one of the things, he was able to find a key, and that key was all FF. And so there wasn't even anything that was uh, set, and so, you know, the, it's pretty ridiculous, the level of encryption in this thing. But that's not to discount what Scott did, because when you read the flow of everything he tried, like his work and the work that was involved in figuring this thing out, is fantastic. I mean, it's uh, it's inspiring to go read just to think about an, attacking some encryption system you might be looking at because he really breaks down all the steps. It just so happens that the, the key that he found happened to be all FF. Now, the result of this work is his man-in-the-middle exporter. So this goes between the smart meter and the cloud. It's a piece of software that he wrote that basically the smart meter connects to this piece of software, and then this piece of software connects up into the cloud. And so why would you want to do that? Well, one is to pull the smart meter data that now he can decrypt. Uh, you know, he can also feed up his own power meter data. You know, what you could do with that, I don't know. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. Obviously, he sent the, uh, the Batman image, which is uh, pretty awesome. I, I learned that there even was such a thing as a Batman equation and that it's freaking huge, uh, but that it actually does send Batman. Now, the other cool thing you can do is because you're in control of what leaves the smart meter, you can also be in control of what comes down to the smart meter. So you can look at things like maybe software updates or things that are getting pushed to it and perhaps cache that in your man in the middle program and decide whether you want to allow it to update or not. This is very similar to uh, 
satellite TV and people used to build these little cards that went between the card itself and the receiver. And so, you know, when they'd send down something to try to kill your, your satellite TV, this little card in the middle would block it and you would choose what to allow to go across or not. That's basically what his man in the middle tool is doing. It's giving him the choice of whether he wants to update or not. Now he feeds it into a tool called Prometheus, which is a system kind of monitoring and alert tool. It's good for capturing time series data. I haven't used it myself, but he seems to like it. So it means it's probably good because I like what he's doing. His exporter you can find on his GitHub. So if you have a good Wii solar system and you want to capture your data, feed it into something else, whatever that might be, go check out his GitHub. Now, if you want to receive smart meter data from, say, Landis and Gear smart meters that you might have, using the GR smart meters, GNU Radio smart meters tool that I wrote a while ago, Losher has a great write-up on the Richesson Wiki for using that with distributions other than Ubuntu, which is what I based it on. So if you're running something else and you want to give it a try, there's a few steps to install it. You go check out that page. Like, subscribe, share this with other people who are interested in reverse engineering or just technology in general. And check out the Discord. If you want to see other people chatting about stuff, you want to hang out, you want to just uh, chat with other people about things you're working on, head on over. I'll leave you with a quote. I'll see you next week.